Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck. I'm the mother of four and I have planned multiple weddings. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to plan your daughter's wedding. some different things to wedding planning in this video than you maybe have heard be applied before. So what you might not know about me is I actually teach parenting, good communication skills all over the world. I actually have written 11 books on the topic. I'm most known for a book called Parenting a House United. And in that book, I talk about how to communicate with people so that you can maintain your calmness. We're going to be spending some time in this video talking about key things to think about as you're planning your wedding, but also how to keep it a calm affair. All right, so I have four children, two boys, two girls, and I have planned four weddings. So there is a difference between planning your son's wedding and planning your daughter's wedding. Now with one of the weddings that I planned for my son, um, I actually ended up doing a lot of the daughter side of things too because she was from out of state and wanted to get married here and her family wasn't here and so I ended up doing a lot of that planning as well. So I've kind of been on the girl side or the daughter side of planning weddings three times. Two times for my daughters. And you know, there is that desire to pull off their perfect wedding. What they've always wanted in their heart. Also to try to keep it within a decent budget if it is at all possible. Maybe some people don't care about the budget, but we didn't want to make it so extravagant that it would seem like there was no end to the spending, right? We, we wanted the children to try to be a little bit prudent. This is a good life lesson for them as they're launching into their own lives as adulthood. No more calling mom and dad and if they get in a pinch, you know, for a housing in college or something like that. They've got to handle it now completely on their own. I mean, pretty much they were anyway, but still the budget we felt like was important. So let's talk about some key things that we can do. And then some of the things that can happen along the way. Now, one of the hardest things with planning a wedding is that you've got people now from two separate families who have ideas. It's so important that the bride and the groom understand at the very beginning, at the very beginning, number one, how excited you are and how you want to make it wonderful for them, but also how a wedding is not just for them. This is important. I think a lot of people keep the wedding just about the bride and the groom, but there's all of these other people who are planning the wedding. They're part of it. And there's the groom's side and the bride's side. And they have people that are going to come, key people in their lives, family members. Suddenly it's a family reunion too, okay? There's people that they need to see, right? You may, even maybe key colleagues that are going to be coming potentially, you know, who knows who's going to be invited to these affairs. These people, the parents who are putting in all of this time, they actually want a celebration. They want a party too. They want to meet with people that they love too. And they want to have time talking to those people that they love. They don't want to spend their time serving food and, you know, doing all this kind of thing at the wedding. And so the bride and the groom need to understand that as they plan the wedding, they need to keep the other players in mind. Okay. So now historically the groom's family takes care of the suits, the flowers, the rings and the rehearsal dinner or the wedding breakfast, depending on what you have for those things. Now the bride's family, all the rest, basically the cake and the dresses and the decorations and the venue and you know, the reception, if you're having a reception, um, there's a lot of travel expenses that can be incurred. Now I would suggest with travel because not one of my children has married somebody from in the state where, which we live. And so there's always travel expenses. Well, we always decided talking with the other family that we were going to be working with was we will all handle our own travel. Nobody expected each other to handle the travel of the other person. Now I know in some circles there are certain social protocols with that and you can handle that however you want to, but we just decided it was more practical to just everybody handles their own travel and their own lodging wherever they happen to be going for that special day. 
I'll be sharing with you some of my key tips for wedding planning for your daughter's wedding. But before I do, subscribe now to this channel. Everything on this channel relates to good communication and calmness, and there are probably going to be multiple videos that are gonna help you along the way as you try to work on your calmness and your self-government, so subscribe now. As I mentioned, the most important thing that you can have in this whole thing is calmness. And everything that we're gonna be talking about here will hopefully get you closer to calmness so that you can have that on your wedding day as well as when all of the buildup time preparing for the wedding. In fact, at the end of this video, I actually have a free gift for you where you'll be able to get some additional training in calmness that I think will really help you. But before we get to that, let's talk about one of the key things that you can do to improve your calmness and that is to have really solid, proactive communication about about everything. As soon as somebody says, we're getting married, then you say, okay, great. Let me know when you've got the date and where you think you might be wanting to have it. Let's come up with a couple of options just in case. And then we will all get together and we will discuss the finances and what we hope to have out of the wedding too, since we're part of putting it on, we will have a conversation about everything that we need to discuss. So you pre-teach that you are going to pre-teach what they need to be focusing on as they are planning the wedding. This is really important. There are some people that have to prep their brain to be told that there are parameters for something. Or there are some people that if they're going to plan anything in the future, they need to have enough build up time to get there. And you don't know with your future in-law if that's the type of guy that she's marrying, right? Does he need that type of prep? Then you've got to prep them. So so don't push them hard for details right at the beginning because that's a little overwhelming, okay? So instead, what you're gonna do is say, this is so exciting, we're so happy for you. So I know you're gonna be thinking about a time and a location. As soon as you think you might have those things down, let's discuss because we're gonna need to check our availability on the times to make sure it's a good time. And we're gonna wanna maybe, you know, give a little bit of input on location and talk about finances and what we logistically can do with finances, all that kind of stuff. Say, so then we'll have that big conversation. So they know, no planning can happen until that conversation has been had. This is so important. I cannot stress enough how important this is. So many people focus on, okay, what colors, what dresses, what whatever, and they start just going and they buy the pair of wedding shoes that's like $800 or, or they say, this is my wish list for my shoes and that's what they hope for. And that's great that it's been on their Pinterest board for like five years, but at the end of the day, if they didn't have a conversation with you about it and you're not willing to do $800 just for the bride's shoes, you don't wanna kill the wedding right? You don't want them to feel like you, you don't care about their hopes and dreams. You need to have all those pre-teaching moments ahead of time. Now, just like good parenting, there is this principle of vision that we need to apply to our, our planning of the wedding. And so we want to have the vision conversation. And this is what's going to occur after the bride and groom have looked at their schedule and talked a little bit about their vision. You may even want to pre-teach them before at that very first conversation. Don't get too tied into things that you can't have changes because when you're working with a whole group, we do have to try to see what's going to work for everybody, even though we're going to try to make this exactly, you know, or the best that we can for your big day. So just letting them know there could be concessions that have to be made. If a bride or a groom is not ready for concessions, they get grumpy, moody. Their whole wedding day could be destroyed. Or the week before, they could turn into bridezilla because everything's not turning out exactly how they want. So pre-teaching is probably like the most important thing that you could do. And I'm suggesting right now, pre-teaching, that you're going to be pre-teaching. And then all along the way, we're gonna keep pre-teaching. So what is pre-teaching? In my Teaching Self-Government Parenting course, I talk about pre-teaching and how vital that is to good parenting. So pre-teaching is when you tell someone ahead of time, okay, this is something that's going to be happening. 
And this is the skill that you need to utilize along the way, or you need to be mindful of this, or when we communicate with this, let's do it with this type of an understanding tone. Okay, so it's basically you preparing someone for something that's gonna come. This decreases anxiety. When it comes to wedding planning, your daughter and your son-in-law, probably the daughter usually more than the son-in-law, will have anxiousness or anxiety about getting all the things done. They may want to get it done really, really fast, or maybe they want to take their own sweet time and they don't want to be pressed for certain information. You know their personality, but they are going to have anxieties one way or the other. And so you've got to prepare them to handle their anxieties by preparing them for the vision of not only what the big day will be, but also for what the planning can be like. So I suggest having a conversation with your soon to be married daughter after she comes to you with the possible date and the location, then you say, honey, we're gonna have a special meeting about that. But before we do, before we set that up, which we can maybe do tomorrow or something like that, you're just gonna push it off, even if it's just by one day or even like this evening, we're gonna talk about that over dinner. You wanna have another pre-conversation where you say, honey, let's talk about right now what we want this planning of this wedding to do for our relationship. Because I know there's a lot of things, right? There's decorations and food and pictures and invitations and wedding videos and all of those things that we wanna think about and talk about and those are gonna be details. But really the most important part for me in all of this planning is our relationship. In us having something that we are working on together as a project that turns out being positive uplifting and unifying. And I want you to know, honey, that I am willing to work with you any way I need to in order to have that happen. But I also want to know that from your side, you're wanting something similar. What are you wanting out of this planning time, this last project that we work on together? And hopefully, your daughter will be able to tell you, I want it to be a bonding time. I want us to like it and to love it and to enjoy our time together. And if she doesn't bring up some of those things, maybe you can bring in those things from your side, but create this vision or this picture of you guys going out to lunch and then going shopping for the dress, going out to lunch and going to meet the photographer going out to the lunch and going to test cakes, right? All the, the little things that you're gonna be doing where you are having talk time. Say, a mother looks forward to planning the wedding with her daughter forever because she wants to talk with her daughter about all the things. She wants to prepare her daughter for marriage and for having a good relationship with her after now, you know, she gets married and somebody else is the top priority in her life, as it should be but she wants to know that that bond has been established between them that can last forever. And that's what I'm hoping for. So you talk to your daughter about that, then you have the conversation with your daughter and her newly engaged to honey about um, where you're gonna go from here with all of the details of the wedding. So what does that conversation look like? It looks like you all sitting down and maybe his parents are part of the conversation too. So we've got everyone there on their best behavior. Hopefully both sets of parents have said, this is what I hope this is for our relationship. I hope it's a bonding thing. We're gonna be as supportive as possible, but you know, you may not get everything you want because there's a lot of people to consider here and let's try to be understanding and respectful of everyone so that we recognize it's everyone's wedding too. And then you're gonna say, okay, when are you thinking? Where are you thinking? Do you have another option for where you're thinking? A fallback, a plan B, and case plan A doesn't work or we can't afford it depending on what the cost is or whatever. And so you have them suggest these things to you. Then we say, okay, now we're going to ask questions. When we ask questions related to the venue or some of your details, maybe we might ask you how much is that? If you don't know, that's fine. Let's, we're just going to put a question mark in this little notebook. Okay. So you're going to have now a notebook. In this notebook, you are going to list everything, the, the photographer, the videographer, the florist. Well, the florist will be, you still list it actually as the mother of the bride. You still list it, but you put groom's family and probably this florist because they're going to say, where do you want your flowers, honey? We'll get them anywhere you want. <laughs> that's what 
they're probably gonna say, unless they have a florist, you know, that they already trust and know, and that they want you to meet with, probably they won't be picky. So you're gonna still list the details there, but you're gonna put where it is, who it is, and you're gonna start filling in the columns, and then you'll have a third column, and the column will be cost, right? And you might even have four columns, budget in one of the columns for that item, and then cost. Okay, so that you can try to stick within a budget. Now, this is where you're gonna to have to break the news in this meeting to the daughter, hey, we've got a budget. If she didn't already know, hey, our budget is $10,000, or our budget is $20,000, or our budget is $2,000, so it doesn't matter, okay? What your budget is, if you've got a budget, you've got to disclose that so that they know what they're working with. And then you might have to say, listen, I'm, I'm a pretty big stickler on the budget because you know I can't go into debt on the wedding. We're gonna do the best we can within this budget, so we might have to be creative. And so you've got to say the budget. Now here's one key thing. Once you declare the budget, you cannot go less. More, whatever, but you cannot go less. So before that meeting, you have to know your budget, which means that you need to have had a meeting with possibly your spouse or other key players on your side of the funding to make sure that you know exactly how much money you are dealing with if you are having a budget. Some weddings will not have a budget, and that's fine if that's the way your family is going to do it. But once you hit that budget mark, if you, if you are not gonna have a budget, then don't complain over expenses. Do not complain. That will ruin the tone of the wedding for everyone, okay? But if you are gonna have a budget, then you have to allow that threshold to be hit and not complain because you set the budget. So all the way to that budget, you need to be happy having that party. And then prepare yourself for a few unexpected costs because that can almost always happen. So have your budget in mind and put aside a little extra just in case. Either that or tell them a little lower on the budget and have a little extra in the fund so that you don't have to be frustrated if there is an oops cost or an extra cost that nobody factored in at the very beginning. All right, are you ready for more conversations? So now we need to have other conversations. In fact, I highly recommend a weekly checkup with the daughter because maybe she doesn't live at your house, right? So she's doing things on her own and you're doing things on your own. In fact, I just thought of another column for your book. So you need to have the title of what you're doing, what you're doing like flowers video, such and such, and then who's in charge of it, the, the company or the person that you're contacting to be in charge of it, and then the budget for it, and then the cost of it. Now you need to have another column when it's done, right? It's done, and then you probably need another column, which is the follow-up call. So you may plan it months in advance. Well, then it gets to be the week before the wedding. You've gotta call all those people, and then you've gotta do, okay, I did a follow-up call on this day. It is for sure arranged. The flowers, the cake, they will arrive at the venue, right? Those things need to just be checked on one more time for safekeeping. But through this whole process of planning the wedding, whether it's three weeks or three years, I highly I highly recommend that you say, okay, once a week, we are going to just have a very brief time where we say, okay, have we done anything on the wedding this week? Do we need to do anything on the wedding this week? Do we need to add anything to the list? Did we check pricing on that? Can we add something on our little sheet, right? And maybe you put it all on a Google spreadsheet so that everybody can just add the stuff on there. That might even make it easier. But having the touch times, those little touch points where you communicate with each other about it should be something everyone expects. And I suppose you can do it text, but I recommend just having a brief talk person to person so that you can say at the end, honey, I'm so excited. I love you. This is so much fun to plan this with you. Thank you for letting me be part of it because that is really what it's all about and you wanna keep bringing it back to the relationship again and again. Now, with all of this list of to-dos and sometimes factoring in other people, maybe some of the bridesmaids or groomsmen or extended family members that start making things difficult for you, adding on pressure, making a shower at a time you didn't want the shower to happen for the bride, you know, something like that that you have to deal with. How do you maintain calmness during those times? Well, I'd like to help you with that. 
There are key skills I teach in my parenting program. One in particular is a skill called accepting no answers. When you accept a no answer, you look at the person or the situation, you keep a calm face, voice, and body. You say, okay, or ask to disagree appropriately, and then you drop the subject, which means you let it go. Now I know letting it go can be easier to say than actually do, but there are things that you can learn about maintaining calmness and letting things go. And I would like to share some of those things with you in my free gift. Remember I told you I had a free gift for you? Well, it is my Calm Parenting Toolkit. In the description below this video, there is a link to the Calm Parenting Toolkit. Now I know you've already raised this daughter. You're maybe th not thinking in terms of parenting her anymore. I promise you, you'll always be parenting. It just looks a little bit different, but you will still be able to use all of the principles in this Calm Parenting Toolkit and you can have it for free. So if you click on the link in the description below this video that says teachselfgov.com slash toolkit, then you can get the Calm Parenting Toolkit for free. So click on the link now and I will see you there.